All right, can you guys hear me okay? You can just leave a chat if you want to. Uh, just wanna make sure that my volume and everything is good before I get going. Are you guys able to hear me or is it is the volume? Okay, everybody's able to hear me, awesome. Just wanna make sure I've had these before where I've talked for like 10 minutes before anybody let me know that it wasn't working or you know something was going on. So um, if anything goes wrong, just leave me a chat and um, I'll appreciate it. So um, we've got kind of limited time. These Zoom me meetings are usually timed at like an hour. So um, hopefully we won't, we won't be that long, but um, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So the orientation today is just going to be sort of going through Blackboard and um, just, you know, viewing the course, seeing what there is, and um, just to kind of get you guys, you know, head first into the course and so there's no confusion later on. Um, this is an eight-week course, so it is very, very packed. Um, it'll be, you know, pretty much wide open for the whole eight weeks, um, but we'll get more into that in just a second. And I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen so that y'all can see my course. And if at any time you have any questions or anything, just feel free to leave them in the chat box and I will um, answer them as I'm going along. It'll send me a little alert, but, or you can you know unmute yourself for a second, whatever you need to do, but just stop me if you need clarification or anything um, while I'm going. All right, so hopefully everybody has been able to log into their Blackboard page. And sorry, I'm at home today, so my, my cats are like jumping all over me for some reason. Um, if you see somebody go by or a cat go by, just ignore it. Um, so, so our course page, hopefully you're able to log in here and see everything. Um, we've got just our like welcome announcement right now. And then we've got our virtual orientation link. But this first announcements page here, um, I will make announcements pretty frequently. I'll also do a weekly check-in with everybody just to kind of like go over assignments and, you know, if there's any questions or anything or anything that needs clarification, um, <laughs> I'll answer it in the weekly check-in. Um, let's go over there, Daryl. Come on. <laughs> so the announcements page will be really well used. And then everything that's in the announcements, you'll also get an email to your Gaston College email address to, for. So um, just make sure you're checking your email, your Gaston College email, not your personal email, um, and your uh, announcements page pretty regularly for any updates and then those weekly check-ins. So our syllabus, I've got more of like a PowerPoint that we're going to go through with for our syllabus. Um, but if you ever need to like reference any policies or just anything that you feel like is structurally important to the class, um, it'll be in your syllabus. We've also got our course entry quiz right here. And if you have not already, please go ahead and take that. It just takes you like two seconds to do, um, but that's like our auditing tool that we use for the course. So when you take that, you'll be like officially registered into the, or I mean, you already are registered to the class, but um, that will be like your census activity. Um, our course info, this will be an important tab as well. We've got our course schedule here. So this is going to be like a breakdown week by week. And I would honestly, I know we have like a calendar over here in the course tools and, um, you know, we can see deadlines on the actual assignments themselves. But this calendar is going to be like the main copy of what you're going to use for knowing what is due when. Um, so make sure that you're checking this weekly and you're checking your weekly check-ins that I do via video um, weekly as well, just to make sure that you've like, you know, checked all your boxes, that everything's gotten completed. Um, sometimes, and this is just kind of like, I, I can't figure out how to make this work the right way. Um, but for whatever reason, our calendar, um, it won't show when ed puzzles are due, which is a type of assignment that we use in this course. And it also will not show, um, when there are discussions due and I cannot figure out how to turn it on to where you can see that in the actual calendar itself. So make sure that you're checking here just to make sure that you're getting everything that you need for that week. Um, faculty info, that's just my email address and just some more info about me if you need it. Um, but that'll all be in our syllabus as well. So just, you know, our, our stuff will be located for contacting, um, pretty much everywhere. I've got a chat. Let me make sure. Oh, okay. So the Ed puzzles, you have to go to them through the, like, the way you have to do that. You'll click on modules right here. 
and then just go into your course page and then you'll click on the lessons one and two ed puzzle folder and then you'll click on the puzzles from here um your class is already like registered so you already have an account but through i follow the link in the powerpoint um no so you'll you'll want to do the ed puzzles in the ed puzzle folder um the powerpoint's just there as like an extra like if you need that for a guide but the ed puzzles themselves that is the powerpoint and me giving like our verbal lecture so um, you'll have to do those in order to get participation credit. Um, the PowerPoint is just there for like extra info if you need it. But the power, the ed puzzles that are in this folder are graded assignments. So you want to make sure that you actually click on those and watch those and answer the built in questions with them. Does that answer your question? Yeah, if, if, as long as you're following the links in the Edpuzzle folder, you should be good to go. But I'll go into more info about that in just a few minutes. So what I want to do first is kind of rapid fire, go through our syllabus PowerPoint, and hopefully this will help clarify anything that we need to um, have clarified that will be in the syllabus. And if I need to slow down on anything, again, just let me know. Um, I'll probably move through this fairly quickly. Um, but if you need me to slow down or go back to anything, just let me know. I'm trying to make it to where it's just me here, but um, that's okay too. So our instructor info and office hours, this is just my information, um, my email address that you can reach me at. That's going to be my primary source of communication. So make sure that if you ever need to get in contact with me, that you're emailing me at this email address. Um, if you do need to make like a Zoom appointment for office hours, I can definitely do that. I also have like in-person office hours, um, but if you, it, I, I very rarely, if not never have anybody come for in-person office hours. So um, just preferably for you and for me, if you would like to meet via Zoom to talk about your grade or anything else in the class, um, we can just set up a Zoom appointment and I can make that work pretty much with whatever your schedule is. So our course description, I feel like our appreciation is kind of one of those courses where um, when you're going into it, sometimes you don't know what to expect. This course is not like an art making course. This is a like art theory and art history and just like an introduction to what art is course. So it's much more like reading and writing assignments and, um, you know, kind of analyzing artwork rather than like actually making artwork. We will have a few assignments where we do um, like make things, but mostly we're going to be prioritizing the history and like the analysis of artwork. So our description is this course introduces the origins and historical development of art. Emphasis is placed on the relationship of design principles to various art forms, including but not limited to sculpture, painting, and architecture. Upon completion, students should be able to identify and analyze a variety of artistic styles, periods, and media. And um, so then I've got, we will be looking at a collection of artworks and focus on their visual aesthetic and the elements that these artworks offer us that will help us derive meaning from the piece. The pieces of art that we'll be fo focusing on will be paintings, drawings, sculpture, and architecture, photography, and the decorative arts, performance art, conceptual art, um, and others. We will also be, uh, also attend a physical gallery spaces as a group. Um, this, I should have taken this out. After COVID, we did stop doing like the physical gallery um, opportunity together as a group, but um, you you can still do that for one of our assignments if you'd like to, but I should have taken that out already. And here's our student, learn student learning outcomes. Um, upon the completion of Art 111, the student will be able to trace the origins and historical development of art, recognize the major artistic periods and styles, identify the various roles of the artist, analyze how conventions, culture, and tradition contribute to the meaning of an artwork, and analyze the relationships of design principles to various art forms, including but not limited to drawing, sculpture, painting, architecture. And then lastly, identify the processes and traits of various artistic medias. So um, we'll break that down as we go along throughout the course, but um, if you ever need to kind of like jump back and kind of be like, okay, what are we, um, what are we focusing on here? Like, what's the goals? Um, this is where all of our like assignments and everything are stemming from is trying to meet one of these student learning goals. So I want to acknowledge again, um, this is an eight week course. So this does not mean that this is a lesser course or that there is like less work involved in this course than there would be in a 16 week course. I know that can be kind of overwhelming, but um, again, you're trying to pack, you know, the same amount of credit hours same amount of just like material into just a smaller amount of time. So 
Um, I want to kind of break down what you should expect for this course as far as like time spent throughout the week. Um, an eight week course means 16 weeks of work. It's compressed to fit into eight weeks. It does not mean that there is less work. So expect to spend several hours per week on this course. Um, just to kind of like break down the math and this is how all of our like college courses break down like you know the amount of studying that you should do with any course um so you can use this for you know not only this course but other courses as well um but we equate one credit hour um to two to three hours of study per week so this course is a three credit hour course which we can anticipate in a 16 week course having six to nine hours of study per week and since this is an eight week course which is half the time of a 16 week course, um, we can expect to spend 12 to 18 hours per week on assignments. So um, again, this is, uh, you know, a, a lot of material is gonna be covered in this course. Um, we'll have several assignments due throughout the week. And I'm not saying that you're necessarily gonna spend all of that time studying or, you know, preparing for this course, but um, definitely, you know, spend, expect to spend some time per week. You know, we, we have papers and videos and all kinds of things that we'll do throughout the week. Um, so yeah, just giving you a little synopsis of what you're getting into. All right. Um, another important thing about our class specifically is that this class is an OER content-based course, meaning that we do not have an official textbook for the course. Um, if you're concerned about, you know, having to buy the textbook, you know, look no further. We do not have a textbook that you have to purchase, which is great for you because you do not have to purchase anything. Um, but we do have a lot of other sources, um, one of those being Edpuzzles that make up our course material. Um, but it is very important, and I'll mention the Edpuzzles again, um, that you do complete all of the ed puzzles that are assigned to you in each of the modules. These are our lecture materials. So not only are they like, you know, the content for the course, but they are also graded assignments. So Every time that you have an Edpuzzle folder in the module, it's your responsibility to watch every single lecture video, every video that is posted in that folder. Um, they'll all be for credit. And uh, in addition to the Edpuzzles, OER content for this course will consist of PowerPoints, videos, um, other type of assignments, and article readings. You know, the list goes on and on, but there is no traditional textbook. Um, this is an important one, and since our class is so fast-paced, um, it, it is extremely important that your online attendance is very regular. Um, if you are going to like miss a week, if you're going out of town, that sort of thing, you need to plan to make sure that you're completing your assignments at some point in the course before you take a trip. Um, another thing with this course is that you cannot, it, it's uh, designed to where you cannot work ahead. So you are responsible for like every single week for, you know, a short period of time, only eight weeks, um, completing your assignments, you know, and getting that coursework done. But because it is an eight week course, um, just for perspective, we have eight modules in the course. So if you miss one week of work, um, that's like missing, you know, an eighth of the class, essentially. So, you know, just again, just kind of reiterating this, um, the, the timeliness of this and how fast paced things are going to be. Missing a week worth of work is going to be a lot more serious than if you missed a week worth of work in a 16 week course. So the official policy, though, for online attendance, um, if you miss 21 consecutive days in a row, in a course, then that means that you have to be withdrawn from that course. Um, and that is just a Gaston College policy. So, you know, going inactive means that you don't submit anything. Um, you don't email with me. Just simply signing into the course is not considered attendance. You have to actually like submit something or make some attempt at like outreach to me. Um, so yeah, just don't go, you know, I, I wouldn't go more than five days without being active in the course, but for sure, 21 days, um, that's how you'll get withdrawn from the course. Um, and then going on to the withdrawal process. So like I said, if it's 21 consecutive, like in a row days, that means that you do have to be withdrawn from the course. Um, the last day to be withdrawn is April 11th. Um, if you go longer than that without being withdrawn from the course, then it will go on your transcript as being an F um, for the course. So if you catch it before the 11th, then it'll just be a W and it won't actually affect your GPA. Um, but if it is after April 11th that you need to withdraw from the course, then it will go on your GPA. Make sure there's no questions real quick, sorry. Okay, we're good. Um, 
Additionally, with this class, and I really just do this so that we are making sure that we're staying on task, we're getting our work done weekly, um, because piling up, accepting late work, it's just, it's it's really not possible for this course. So um, for this course, being as short as it is, I do have a no late work policy, um, unless there are extenuating circumstances that can have documentation provided for them. So like a doctor's note that would excuse you from not only a day of class, but like a whole week's worth of, of online material, like justify missing that. Um, or if there's other extenuating circumstances, but it's like, I mean, really pretty much unless you're like in the hospital for a week, um, there's not really any other excuse that I would take to allow you to submit late work with. Um, all of our assignments are always going to be due at on Sundays at 1159. So the assignments will open for the week on Monday mornings, and then you'll have the whole week to complete them. And then Sunday night is when they'll all be due. Um, and again, I do realize that technical issues do happen. Um, however, in a fully online course, you are expected to have reliable access to a computer, blackboard, internet, et cetera. Um, I missing a charging cable, no internet, don't know where to turn the assignment in on blackboard, et cetera. These issues will not be, um, grounds for turning in late work. So it's your responsibility, you know, at the beginning of the week, make sure that you can log into everything, make sure that you've got all your technology with you. Um, and then, you know, make sure that you can, you can turn it in on time again, unless there is just some like extreme extenuating circumstance surrounding something. Um, it's just in an online course like this, you, you have to have, you know, these, very, you know, reliable sources to the computer, Blackboard, internet, et cetera. We also have, um, uh, computer labs and library access on campus um, should you ever need computer or Wi-Fi. Um, and a lot of those are like all day, like every day, seven day a week um, open facilities. So um, if you do ever need to, if your Wi-Fi goes out or your computer gets lost or, you know, something happens, you do have a space that is, you know, that you're paying for essentially um, where you can get these um, materials from. So my email policy, you, and this is, this is not entirely just my policy, but when you're communicating with anybody at Gaston College, you're required to use your Gaston College email address. Um, if you are using a personal email address, like your high school email, or just another, you know, personal address that is not the Gaston College email, um, that ends in like mymail.gaston.edu, I cannot respond to you. Um, it's just a, a privacy policy that we have and that we're kind of more so endorsing now than we ever have before. So um, please do not use your personal email and I will not, except for like that first intro email, I won't send any more emails to your personal email address. Um, because I have several sections of art appreciation, I also require, and this is the wrong one, I'm sorry, um, that you to put your section number and ours is D6H. So when you look at the top of our uh, Blackboard course, you'll see it says Art 111 D6H as in Hey, um, and just make sure that you put that. That helps me find your information quicker. And um, because I do, this is actually my seventh art appreciation class of the year um, or out of the semester. So I've got seven other classes that have Art 111 and then three digits behind them. So just saying Art 111, um, it's not enough information. I'm going to have to look through all six, six or seven of the courses um, to find where your information is coming from. So please put that section number. Um, and if you don't put it, I will politely remind you through email and just say, like, please provide your section number. It's not me being mean or a stickler or anything. It's just that it, it's a lot easier for me to just ask you that than to search through seven different rosters for your information. Um, lastly, or next to lastly, please make sure that your emails are well composed. I've got a little thing on email netiquette that's listed in the course information if you need help formulating an email. But just know that I do not treat email like texting. Um, it just is, it, just be as specific and straightforward as you can. Um, don't, you know, be vague or like if you're looking for like where an assignment's located at or what the instructions are, be specific. Say like, you know, I'm looking for the assignment that's due this week titled, you know, quarantine art challenge in lesson 11. Um, just try to be as specific as you can because just saying like, you know, when's the project due? Um, that doesn't gonna be enough information to go off of. I need you know you to be as specific as possible so we're not wasting your time and, and my time as well. And then lastly, I do not use Blackboard Messenger. Um, so when you go over to, I'll show you where that's at real quick. When you go over to 
um, the side over here. And I've actually got ours turned off, but there's this like little message and email thing. Um, and then it pops up in my actual Blackboard page, but I do not use that. Um, if you respond to me or like if you comment there or email me there, um, I will not check it. So make sure that the only way that you're communicating with me is through your Gaston College email address um, that is through Outlook and you're sending it to my Gaston College email address. Check this message real quick. Um, I, I don't see, um, yeah, no, I mean, I don't, I don't see an issue with if you need to bring your kids to, to the college, that's, that's totally fine. I would think for like the library and stuff, and as long as, you know, y'all are being quiet and, you know, respectful of everybody that's around you, then I highly doubt that would be an issue. Um, my next part here is on adaptive release. So I kind of mentioned this earlier, but because of the late work policy and just like the fast pacedness of this course, um, I do have our modules set on adaptive release, meaning that like the week that a module opens, it'll be 12 a.m. on Monday, and then it'll be open until 11.59 p.m. the following Sunday. And then at 12, 12 a.m. the next Monday, it will reset. So module one will close and then module two will open. So, um, you know, if you are, I mean, literally like even like a minute late submitting an assignment, um, the module will close. So just be sure that you're not working till the, the last second that you're getting things turned in on time. And, um, you know, you won't have any issue with that. We do have several writing assignments for this course. So if you do need to go to the writing center or um, just, you know, submit a form to the writing center and they can, you know, help you edit your document or your paper or whatever it is um, virtually. Here is the form for that. Um, we also have their email address and their phone number and their location right here. Um, but if you ever need help with anything like writing related, this is the place to go. They're super, super helpful there and um, are more than happy to help you however they can with getting your, um, your papers situated. Um, getting, you know, any formatting or organization or just like grammar stuff fixed. Um, but yeah, they're super, super helpful if you'd like to reach out to them. And if you do reach out to them, they send me a form saying, you know, so-and-so just completed their time at the writing center. And then that kind of looks good for me because then, or looks good for you to me, um, because I know that you're kind of going that extra mile to make sure that your stuff looks good. Check this chat real quick. Um, no, we cannot work ahead and we cannot work in retro, like retroactively. So like the, the time periods that the modules are open um, is like the only time that you can work on them. Um, okay, here we're getting into our methods of evaluation. So this is our, um, like what we're graded on essentially and the weights of each of those. Um, I hope this is not new for anybody or you know, this might just be the first time that you're hearing that this is the way that a course could be set up. Um, I have had a few issues with this in the past with students just simply not understanding the weighted grading process. But for example, our participation um, is worth 15% of our total grade. And the participation makes up all of the Edpuzzle videos that we'll watch this whole eight weeks. Um, I think there's like 60 or 70 of them total. So, I mean, one Edpuzzle weighted grade is like a 60th of 15% of your total grade. Like it's like, you know, decimals at that point. Um, however, our projects, we have two, we have a midterm project and we have a final project and those are worth 30% total. So that's just two assignments, but they total twice of what the participation is worth. And hopefully that makes sense to y'all. Um, I had a student last semester though, who was really confused about that um, because she had, you know, done all of her participation videos and, you know, made a hundred all of them. So that was like, you know, a hundred that was 15% of the total grade, but then she had not turned in one of the two projects. So I think that her average was like a 70 something. Um, and she was like, I just don't understand because I have so many hundreds in the grade book, but how, how do I have this low grade? I'm like, well, you know, that one grade that you didn't turn in is worth 15% of your grade. So that's, you know, the highest you could get at that point, it will be an 85 um, if you miss one of those projects. So just be aware of that. Um, different assignments do have different weights to them. So each of these assignments, I've already gone over the participation one. Um, this is actually the wrong one too. I'm sorry about that. But participation, as we know, is just the Ed Puzzle videos. 
Um, as long as you're watching each and every Edpuzzle video that is in the Edpuzzle folders, um, you should be good to go on that. Assignments and discussions, these are very similar types of assignment. They're also each worth 15% of your grade. You'll have four or five of those throughout the semester each, um, maybe a little bit less, I'm not sure. Um, but so I'd say four to seven of each of those. Assignments are just like direct submissions. They don't require you to comment onto anybody else's post. So you, they require you to follow their prompts and address each of the respected tasks. You'll need to submit both writing and images in one document, preferably a Word document and upload to the assignment. And then discussions are similar to assignments. However, discussions require students to respond to their classmates' discussions as well as to submit their own. So responding in, your thoughtful ma in a thoughtful manner will be counted into your final grade. The quizzes, um, we have eight modules throughout the semester and there is one quiz per module. So we've got eight quizzes total. Um, each quiz is multiple choice, uh, true or false, fill in the blank, and they're each 10 questions. They'll never be any more or less than that, um, but it's just a summary of what you've learned in each of the modules. Our projects, we have a midterm project, which again, midterm remember is like a month from now. It's not, you know, that far along really. Um, but the midterm project is to write an art analysis of an artwork and this will be based on our first three sets of modules. Um, and we'll get more into that as we kind of progress through, but it's a it's a essay assignment. And then our final project is to curate a virtual museum on Google Slides. Um, we'll do this after our, our art history unit. Um, where we go through all the different like styles of art and you know like all the different um, movements throughout art history and you'll select three that correlate well with what your theme will be um, and then pick artworks from those movements to display in your virtual exhibition. Um, and then project info is always going to be found in the projects folder on the modules page. So if we click here on modules you can view these at any time um, however, do not try to submit these early. Um, I'll have somebody or some students that will, you know, as soon as module one opens, they'll try to complete that project and they do not have the information that they need yet. Um, if you have not completed the work for modules two and three, you will not be able to complete the project accurately and you will not receive a good grade. So, you know, you can look ahead at the instructions if you'd like to, to just sort of like get yourself prepared, but do not submit this project early because you cannot have the information that you need before then. The projects folder is going to be down here at the bottom um, above final exam, and you will be able to click there and see the information for the midterm project and for the final project. And there are videos on both of those in those um, folders. And then lastly, 10% is our final exam, and that is going to be uh, a part A and a part B consisting of multiple choice, fill in the blank, and true or false style questions. Um, I think there's 25 questions on each part of those. Um, part A is designed by our curriculum, so that is like not made up by me. It's made up by like the whole art department. Um, and then part B is going to be made up of uh, previously used quiz questions. So if you would like to, like while we're taking those quizzes in the module to make yourself like a little study guide and just like write down the correct answers, that would probably be very helpful to you um, when you take that part B of the exam. But remember, um, it's 10% total. So like part A is worth 5% of your total grade and then part B is worth 5% of your total grade. Um, it will be online and it is, um, you can, oh, uh, okay, we've got to kind of speed things up. Um, it will be online and it will be um, open note if you would like it to be. Um, it's, there's no way that I can with the online class, like hold it in public, say, or hold it in person so that you, you know, are under supervision the whole time. So yes, you, yes, open note. <laughs> and then lastly, our extra credit opportunities. So Students will have three opportunities to receive extra credit throughout the semester by attending an art focused gallery or museum and writing a brief summary of their experiences. Each extra credit opportunity is worth two points of extra credit that will be added to your final grade. If a student completes all three extra credit opportunities, they will receive six points extra credit. So for example, if a student's grade is at 84 and they complete all three opportunities, their grade will be raised to a 90. So um, please take advantage of those opportunity um, opportunities if you can. 
here are the instructions for those there. You can go to any gallery, but it has to be like, while we're in this course, it can't be a gallery that you went to two months ago or um, you know, not during the duration of this course. Absolutely, yep, yeah. Mint Museum is perfect. We've also got a couple galleries on campus. Um, we actually have a faculty show opening up next week, which will be myself and the other art instructors. Um, and that will be open in the Roush Gallery, which is in the Roush building on the main campus of Gaston College. Um, that will be appropriate as well. But essentially all you have to do is take a selfie in the gallery and then write a two paragraph summary of your experience. Um, all extra credit is due no later than the 3rd of May at 5 p.m., which is the week before finals. And then if you were not already, congratulations now on your official college status. You have access to gym facilities, library access, student discounts, and more. Uh, that come with being a Gaston College student, but it also comes with the expectations of college students um, in this class. So be professional, mature, and respectful at all times, and also um, responsible as well. You are, you know, I, I will help facilitate this course, and I will answer any and every question and help you however I can to be successful in the course. But as far as like remembering your, you know, when things are due, making sure you're turning things in on time, that is your responsibility now as a college student. Um, it is, you know, there there is some, I mean, I, I will help you however I can, like I said, but when it comes down to it, you have to decide whether or not you are gonna take the class seriously. Um, and if you, you know, are not at that point, then this course, especially being eight weeks, might not be a great idea. So um, just, you know, take that with a grain of salt. This course can be, um, can be a lot. So I just want y'all to be, mentally prepared for what's to come. Okay, so quickly, I'm gonna go through what is due for this week um, in the next seven minutes <laughs> that we have time. And um, yeah, so we're gonna go down here to our week one. What we've gotta do this week is go into our start here folder. And y'all have already done the course, or the course uh, virtual orientation. You'll need to complete the course entry quiz that is located right here. Just click on it, it takes like two seconds to do. And then we've also got an icebreaker assignment or an icebreaker discussion that will be in the start here module. You'll see that right here. And then this is that icebreaker discussion. It is just essentially finding your favorite artwork and then telling us about it. Um, make sure that you read through all of the instructions here and that you follow the student example if you need help like you know creating a thread or just knowing what I'm looking for, but you'll just click there and then um, you'll submit it that way. All right, and then um, we also have our first week of modules. So module one, we'll click there. We are going to watch the videos that are in the Edpuzzle folder. We've got not only lessons one and two, but we've got three other videos that we need to complete as well. Um, please answer any built-in questions that are in any of those videos. And then lastly, we've got our active seeing assignment, which is to utilize the information that we've learned about evaluating artwork in our um, first two mod or first two lessons. And then we'll choose an artwork to review and then write a two paragraph um, analysis that tells us one in paragraph one, um, the subject matter and content. So make sure that you, you know, read about subject matter and content. It'll be in lessons one and two. Um, and then I give you sort of a little hint to it as well right there. And then paragraph two is to write a paragraph exploring active seeing and how it made you think differently about the artwork, which again will be explained further in lessons one and two. Um, I've got a student example for you there. And then please make sure to read through those um, reminders as well. Make sure that you're uploading your document as a PDF, that you're um, commenting as text as a, or uh, you add your text as a, you do not add your text as a comment or a link. Um, you do not add your photos as a link. You have to upload them correctly, as it says right there. Um, because I use Starry Night for an example for a lot of assignments, do not select Starry Night as your artwork for this artwork or for this assignment or any assignment moving forward. Um, and if you do have trouble understanding the instructions, be sure to watch the week weekly check-in video for a verbal explanation. Um, I will have that posted shortly where I go more into depth with these um, different assignments that are due for this week, as well as just kind of just some closer, closure information about um, what we went over today. 
And if there is any additional questions or concerns, um, make sure that you let me know no later than Fridays on 5 p.m. at 5 p.m. Now with y'all's class, because we do um, have, it is such a short session, I try to make myself available on the weekends as well as much as I can. Um, but if you want to make sure you hear back from me, make sure that you address it by 5 p.m. on Friday. All right. And if you need to summarize that again, just go to the course info and just make sure that you check all the boxes that are, oh, and also I didn't mention, but we do have quiz one as well. That's on lessons one and two. So again, this is a heavy week. This is all the stuff that we've got to cover in the next few days or so. Um, so hopefully that y'all have access to everything and you're ready to just hit the ground running. Um, and if you do have any questions about any of those assignments, please let me know. Or if you have any other questions, we've got three and a half minutes left to ask in the chat. Um, so what you'll want to do when you're submitting a assignment like that, you'll click on the modules right here, and then you'll go to the lesson, click on active seeing. This is how you'll go to submit it as well. So you will want to go to either upload a file. So the way that I would really suggest doing this is going to like Google Docs, if you have that and it's free access, um, and then say, like putting your image in the Google Doc and then saving that document to your computer and then uploading it as a file. Don't like just copy and paste the link to the Google Doc. You'll want to upload it like as an actual PDF or a Word document. You can also hit create submission right here. And if you want to add the photo in that way, you'll need to click these little three dots and then click that plus button. And you'll have to have saved that picture to your computer and then insert it as a file. Does that answer your question? Oh, and then you can write your text in here too, like right there and then just hit submit. So I meant like, Whenever, so it says we have to write two paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Are we putting the picture on the same Word document and then writing our two paragraphs under the photo? Or do we need to submit the picture first and then sit, submit another document? No, paragraphs? Yeah. So, so you, you'll, it'll all be on the same document. So if you do it this way that like in the create submission, um, you'll like pull your photo in here from the files and then you'll just write underneath it. And then if you do it with the upload files way, then you'll just put everything in like a Google doc or a, um, like a word doc, and then just upload that one file together. Okay. Are there any other questions? Okay. We've got a minute left. So, um, I will stay on here in case anybody would like to chat about anything else. Um, I can also move us to another meeting if we need to talk more on anything. Um, but as far as like this zoom call goes, um, we are limited to a 30 minute time period. So, um, we've got a, I thought it was an hour, but it's only 30 minutes. So, um, yeah, if y'all are good on everything, then you're good to go. And, um, if you have any questions or anything, just let me know. Did y'all have any other questions? We're about to run out of time here. So if you have any other concerns, let me know. I'll fix that right now if we run if I if we run out. Okay. I gotcha. Thank you for letting me know. I'll get that 